Yeah, I built the um, the media room, the yeah. room, the the room where the directors sit and watch all the cameras. I uh, took everything out, so the engineers were supposed to do the shit. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, I'm really good at construction, so I'm in school. I'm a student. I'm working in the production, um, and I'm filming, you know, shit, ra- random stuff. And uh, man, they said we got the grant to redo the room mm-hmm. so they like we understand robert can you just help you know bring in wires just random stuff so the engineers ended up like just designing it but he was terrible at building shit so he knew how to draw it he out, can but... draw it out perfect but he had no idea mm-hmm. like like hand-to-hand combat i'm like you an engineer you're supposed to be able yeah. to and visualize yeah. war and then attack war you know what i mean but he didn't, and it was like, I just started taking stuff apart first. And then I looked at his plans. I didn't really understand it. Mm-hmm. But once he kind of explained it to me, I was like, just tell me where the wires go. Yeah. I rebuilt the whole studio. It was like $250,000 worth of equipment I put in there. Where did you get those skills? Like, where did you learn how to build shit? My dad, my dad used to build stuff all the time, so he'd be in the house all the time just... I, I, he had a construction house. I, I, actually, I grew up in two houses. Okay. So my dad was a he did construction all the time. Uh huh. And then my um, so his house when I finally moved into him or when I was with him, it was always work building. My toys was like a baby tire and hammers and shit. So he's always build with him. So it just came naturally. Yeah. And then he he had friends that fixed cars. So his garage was cars. House stuff all day, every day. That's all he did. So you're Fixed a handyman, mm-hmm. man. That's that's, that's, trade. Dope. that's mm-hmm. dope skill. Like like, that's a skill a lot of people don't have anymore. Yeah. To be able to, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I thank God. Yeah. I thank the Most High every day for that skill because I'm actually rebuilding my house now, and I'm doing it on my own. So I just did half a roof. I'm doing the other half of the roof. I just got a new dumpster. So proud of my new dumpster. It's crazy, yeah. you know. You know that nigga do work when he's proud of a dumpster. You know, I'm proud of my new dad. You see that dumpster? Boy? God damn, that was a good dumpster right there. You know, I had to smack that dumpster when I got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was so proud of my little dumpster. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I'm filling it up with random stuff. Like let's just put regular garbage. Who put the cup in my dumpster? It's a dumpster. So they can put the cup in there. <laughs> Good lord! Did, did your dad uh, want you to be like a mechanic or work with his with your hands, or what did your dad want for you? My dad wanted me to take over the tire shop. Yeah, he always owned the tire shop. His his goal for me was, he, he in his heart I know he never told me, but in his heart he always gave me a little tire for for my birthday. Mm. Like, what I'm doing with a little tie, daddy? I don't know what to do. I got 17 ties. My first 17 birthday, a tie is I got bigger and bigger. Yeah. Now I got a truck tie. I don't know what to do with it. You know what I'm saying? But I think it was an awesome limit. He wanted me to uh he wanted me to fix tires, but then he also knew that tires would be around for a long time. And he was always telling me this trade ain't going nowhere. But as he got older and started to retire, he realized that it, the industry changed. And what? How did the industry? In what way? Oh, it went to <laughs> computers. It, well, it went from like um, kind of almost. It went from like a personal. You gonna do your tires? Yeah, you know I need way more light. I'm black as hell. <laughs> Probably can't see me. It's like you talking to a microphone. It was real bad with conflict. Mm. Do you know conflict? Mm. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, he yeah. black as hell. Yeah, it was he, and he mm. came at night, night. Oh man, it was, it was he came real bad. Middle of the night. Uh huh. Okay, you looking good. Okay, good. Um, but okay, so he he so the, the industry was changing, the approach was changing. That's what it was. So mm-hmm. with with him, it was like you can get a quality tire at this price, mm-hmm. and it wasn't like a lot of used tires. And then the used tire people started to sell used tires for cheaper than he can get them. 
And then they would get new tires for cheaper than he'd get them. So now he's like, he got to find different suppliers trying to figure out. And he realized that was too much of a hustle game, which I already knew that game. Mm. But I just didn't want to do tires. What, when you say you already knew the hustle game. Yeah, I knew they was going to, I kept telling him they was going to go to that. Like, mm. we need to get ch- tires that's cheaper because he would get high quality stuff. My dad wasn't, you know, everybody went to him knew it was, he wasn't getting no low quality stuff. It was all genuine, high quality, guaranteed stuff. Sounds like he took pride in his work. He did. And then he, he it hurt him to see how the industry went so like, we don't care, just put anything on cars and mm. people, he felt like people could die out here with these bad tires. So he didn't, he didn't never want to do a used tire ever. Well, your dad sounds like a good guy. He is, he's an amazing man. Um, and how's he feel? Is he alive? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, okay. dad, yeah, right. pop's still alive today. Uh, he was born 1932. Whew. Yeah, my dad is 90, what? Six. Yeah, yeah, he is like Mr. Burns. Oh, face ass. He, he outlived uh, Diane Feinstein. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my dad's 90, 93. Is that what he made? 94. 93. Okay, so yeah. he's grown. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> what, now, when you when you when you told him that you were going to do comedy, mm. how did he feel about that? He didn't really say nothing. You know, my dad. His number one question is, does it make money? And I couldn't answer that at the time. I said, I'm not funny enough to make money. He said, well, you need a job. Mm. And that's basically his thing. My dad is a, if it makes money, do it. If it don't make no money, then get your black ass out there and make some money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I told him, I, I, I couldn't wait to the day. I told him, I said, Dad, I made some money. He was like, good. Now, now what's your next show? He said, I said, uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I said, I'm going to Wednesday nights with Leon Rogers. Yeah, you know, they got an open mic. He said, does it make money? And then I had to sit back down and said, no, nah, not that show, Dad. He's like, see, <laughs> consistent money, son. You know, so he is all about taking care of family and, and right. making that good money. That sounds old school. That sounds like an old school dad. Yeah. You know, you, got, you want to make sure that your kid is be able to take care of himself. Of course. Um, when did you start? Because you, I know you just referenced Leon, and I know Leon's been around for a while. <laughs> uh, okay, so. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay. okay. I got one of those stories that, okay, I started technically when I was 19 years old. I'm 43 now. Okay. So, so I, started, I started in 2000 exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, February 27, 2000. Okay. Um, and I started because um, my my son was born January of 2000. And um, actually, I used to host my high school talent shows. So my fresh, my senior year, my junior year, I hosted the high school talent show, me and my homie. And uh, they just always thought it was funny. I love to roast people. So I used to roast the teachers and then bring up the talent. And then Sam man, the talent, all, they loved me in my high school. Yeah. Uh, so um, we used to do that. That probably was my first real experience. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know I was doing stand-up. I was just a... Just being you. Just being, just being crazy, you know, for no reason. And, and when I started, I think I went to... Um, I did Damon Williams' room. Okay. And this is before... Is Damon it, was already famous. Okay. Damon's always been famous. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't never remember a time when Damon wasn't famous. And this is here in Chicago? Yes. Uh, his room was the Razzmatazz okay. at the time. And Deion Cole was hosting it. Damon wasn't even there. I think he might have been on the road with the Kings at the time. Where was Dion level at this point? Well, see, Dion to me, at, when I got in in 2000, to me, all these guys were famous in my eyes. Gotcha. You know, gotcha. Dion was famous, Leon was famous, because they had all did um, Def Jam, a right? Def Jam at that point, uh, or some form of Def Jam. Dion had did Def Jam, Damon had did it, Leon had did it. Uh, even they may have been aired, but they did it, you know. So I'm like, man, these they did Comic View, they had did Def Jam, these are comedy guys in Chicago. So it was um, amazing, but Leon, Dion was probably at, you know, mid-level. He wasn't super Dion yet, you know? 
that's what we call him now, Super Dion. Oh, he's Super Dion. Oh, now. yeah, he's Super Dion now. Okay, everyone on the South Side got a nickname. Yeah, uh, yeah you know, every, <laughs> back then, everybody wanted to be a superhero. Yeah. You know, that's where the Destin legend came from. You know, everybody had real nicknames back in, mm. back in the day, and then they said, you know, nicknames are bad for comics. Use your real name, because a nigga tried to get paid off Two-Face. That was my name, Two-Face. <laughs> they wrote a check. They wrote a check for Two Face. I couldn't. I still got that check to this day. I couldn't cash that check for nothing. I'm at the bank. Like, look, look at me. This my picture. This me. They like. Mm -mm. Wait. Why? Yeah. Why did you name yourself after a Batman villain? I was okay. <laughs> so you finna get into all yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah, man. That's okay, so for, yeah. Two Face was my favorite character. Okay. Two. I love Two Face. That's my dog. I love. Okay, it was a um a cartoon. Yeah. Um, about police officers, okay. and it was another. Uh, the villain on that had two faces as well. I love that cartoon. I forgot the name of that cartoon. It was it was all police officers, and uh, the villain was Two Face as well. And I used to love the cartoon, and I love Batman, so it just worked with me. Mm -hmm. And I always was a little. I thought I always had two personalities, so in my mind I would be like real quiet. And observant, or I could be like naked with my dick out running, streaking. You know that, and I would be happy doing it. I'd just be at the Cubs game, naked. You know, not playing. You know, just happy. And that wouldn't be me at other times. You'd be like, that can't be the same person. Yeah. So I always admired that two faced personality. I guess I, maybe I was bipolar and didn't know it. You know, don't. I'm not claiming that. I'm not buying nothing. I, I, I mean. I ain't buying nothing, but um. So so you start in two thousand and and your your wait what was it um Two Face no no that Damon was running the show at yeah Razzmatazz, Razzmatazz. okay so it, it was at the Holiday Inn so Dion Cole brought me up first time okay and then uh the Cotton Club was closing too okay. and uh that was the um uh, uh George Wilborn was hosting it was my second show. And uh, it was at the Cotton Club, and it closed shortly after that. Um, and uh, right after that, um, maybe four shows in, I did a show at Riddles. And the um, casting director for Barbershop was in the audience, right? And I got off. Now, mind you, I'm four shows in. I don't know comedy. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just, people just say, just do you. So I used to go up there and just dance and be crazy and just talk about weird stuff. Like my first joke was really about how um, I met a girl who had two vaginas. You know what I'm saying? That was my first joke. Okay. I used to go out there, do this two vagina joke and, you know, talk about how I dated her and, she, you know, it was hard because she had two periods and she was extra, extra cranky, you know. And I always thought, what if we had a kid and then he had two dicks, you know. Yeah. I used to go in the hole of the two things because I was two-faced. Everything was about two everything, right? And, and, you know, so I used to just weird people out, you know. just yeah. you know, My second joke I ever wrote was like, I always said I wouldn't lick booty, right? You know, but if a girl pretty enough, I'll put a hickey on her doodle. -doo. And I just, I, I shot comedy. That was that was my whole thing Woo! back then. Okay. <laughs> shot comedy. That's, that was my first two jokes I ever wrote. So I used to go up there and do that type of stuff. Just yeah. go crazy. And I guess I don't know what made this lady, this casting director. She just thought I was just hilarious for yeah. some reason. And she said, "You want to be in the movie?" I said, "Yeah." Yeah, of course yeah, I want to be. Why? Right, why? Right, right. She was like, show up here, bam, bam, bam. It's the barbershop set. Yeah. So now I got on this orange jumpsuit. She was like, I want to make sure you're seen, right? I'm in the last scene of the barbershop. If you ever watch the first barbershop, you're going to see me. In the very last scene, Ice Cube walking out the barbershop. The original version is he shook my hand as he was leaving out the barbershop. Well, I'm standing outside the barbershop with a bright orange jumpsuit on. All you see is teeth and, and a dark spot and a bright orange jumpsuit. I was on the promotions. People thought I was in the movie right, back they then. Be talking and hanging out everything, out. cause they saw that particular. It was just the walkout scene. Yeah. It's the end of the movie. Credits go up. It's a good. It's a good scene. I'm, you can see me a whole five, six seconds. 
Yeah. And it was like, first movie ever, first thing I've ever done, five days into comedy, what the hell? I thought comedy. So when my dad was asking me, am I getting paid? Hell yeah, bitch. <laughs> I'm in the movie, you know what I'm saying? And I got paid for it. Yeah. And I got paid for it. So I thought my career was finna. Right. Did a couple movies after that. And um, started doing a two-man comedy act. With my homie uh, Terry Dorsey, we was called Too Shady. Okay. Yeah, Every we did it. Every day's got to be in twos, huh? Yeah, it's still twos. Okay. Yeah, so I was Too Faced. He was shady. We was Too Shady. And, uh, man, whoosh, you talk about next level. We, we was on the road with Leon, on the road with Damon. We uh, traveled a lot. We went to Atlanta about 50 times. There were a bunch of shows in Atlanta. Um you know, we always was with Last Laugh. So D-Ray started Last Laugh. Lil Rel, Michi, Wildcat, and um, Damn Fool later, and then us after that. But what happened was we was always with Wildcat, Michi, and Lil Rel. It was always us five, mm -hmm. Too Shady and Last Laugh, always together. But we was so independent, we never really was like, we join, we don't join nothing. We're, we're a group. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's like trying to get red and meth to join a group. Like, no. Mob deep, you guys. Nah, no, yeah. no. Y'all mob deep. We, I'm Biggie. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. I get it, but I'm still mob deep. But we, we that was the crew. Last Lab was our crew. We did everything together. So, and, you know, it was just a beautiful thing. So, what was it like? So, <clears throat> I've interviewed a fair amount of comics mm. um, so far. You saw the, the goddamn I did, one of 100 and something. Beautiful. Crazy, yeah. And yeah. I hear different, for, depending on the age, is depending on how they kind of describe the, the scene, okay. and depending on north or south. Correct. So, correct. the north side, we don't even need to get into it. They're doing <laughs> Well, back in, back in 2000, the north side scene wasn't for black people at all. It was maybe Aaron Foster. Probably was the first comic to break up yeah. up here. It was a few comics, uh, Hannibal, yeah. Hannibal, um, that actually broke it to the scene. But but like black comics, but like yeah. black comics really didn't do a lot of up north back then. It okay. was mostly South Side, South, you know, West Side. It was a lot of West Side shows, a lot of South Side shows. Took us to Rockford. They went right past the North Side. Yeah. Went up. To Rockford, you know what I mean? But it, was, it wasn't a whole lot to do on the north side. And so then in the, the south side, what was it? What was the energy like? You know, what did it feel like? Man, look, when I got into comedy, it was such a beautiful brotherhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, I ain't going to even lie. It was, I think it was the best time to be in comedy back when I started. And it might have started a little before that, but I and I just mean full camaraderie, the show level. Like right now, like even then it was a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. But like the old heads really mentored the the guys who they felt like and they didn't they didn't discriminate. White, black, Asian. It was just this guy got it. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna help him. And then it went from that to somehow everybody just discombobulated. It feels like, mm -hmm. and it's like no one's reaching back anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot of conversations was had, you know, about people. And that's why I'm going to say much love to D-Ray Davis. Before you, much love to D-Ray Davis. Much love to D-Ray because that's one of the guys that's still reaching back. He don't have to. He don't need to, but he's still reaching back. And I just did Monday Rays last week. I went to L.A. and I did Monday Rays. I saw you on, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. I text D-Ray. I said, I'm coming to L.A. Can I get a spot on Monday Rays? He said, for sure, my nigga, mm -hmm. all day. Right? You wouldn't think at his stature, you know, I quit comedy, I left, I'm back, you know, I haven't talked to nobody, mm. and just me texting him, that's a big, that's a real big bro for you, you know what I mean? Mm. Whereas, you know, some other the guys who made it, who I'm not going to say nothing, but we trying to get them to reach back a little bit. Like, mm. bro, reach back. Like, it ain't, it ain't going to take much to tell a club, that's my little homie. Give him a spot. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I'm saying? It ain't gonna take much, you know. So, you know, what do you think happened in that shift? Like, and, and around what time did this happen? Because the again, the comics I've been talking to, other than like, I want to say like you and Michi mm -hmm. are the only guys I've talked to that have been around in this era, specifically in the South Side. And, uh, yeah. So, okay. Can you break that down? Like, what was what was going on? Like, what happened? Um. Uh, a lot of egos, mm. um, a lot of probably business. A lot of people aren't good at business. So when business get messed up, then relationships get messed up. And then instead of them getting repaired, you think they're repaired, but then somebody gets to that next level, mm -hmm. and then they show that, nah, I was never over that. I just had to deal with it. Cause I'm still in this industry, which mm -hmm. so people don't never. Wildcat said it best: people don't know how to be friends. And if everybody knew how to be friends, then a lot of things would. Even if we have problems, mm -hmm. we could work it out. And that's what didn't get worked out—the problems. So people still got issues they probably hanging on to. Um, the main thing I would say is, is more than likely. It's, it's egos, mm. you know. Sometimes your friends can't reach back. Like, for instance, I could say Lil Rail should reach for me, right? Because that's my friend, my homie. Mm. But if he do, I don't have my SAG. So he going to reach out for me and I can't and put me in a position, mm. but I can't even work. So why would I have an attitude with that brother for knowing that he can't reach out. Now, when I'm ready, he reached back for Wildcat. Wildcat was on his show. Mm. He has his situation, you know? So we ain't going to, we're not talking about brothers that actually reach back. We're sure. talking about the ones that don't. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> you, but in that reach back, you got to be ready. Right. Yeah. It's, it seems like, you, you mean, you said something important there. Um, I know you were quoting someone. You said, uh, people don't know how to be friends. They don't, yeah. And I think, from my experience in, in all of this, it is. It's cutthroat. It's yeah. cutthroat. It's shady. I mean, no. It's, hey, it's, it's a little two-faced. A, a little shady. It's a little shady. <laughs> it's, and it's because people, you know, people will do crazy shit for fame mm -hmm. and clout. And, okay, yeah. and I'm trying to, for me personally, I'm trying to find that balance of building my connections, my French. I mean, you know, Ty and Laro mm -hmm. and yeah. Rachel and all that, mm -hmm. while also being professional and moving forward. And I, I guess it's just a hard balance, you know. Right. Well, see, the thing is, you can't. You still got to try. Of course. You know, what I do is I will always extend my hand. If you don't want to shake it, now I understand. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm not going to not be me and extend my hand because someone said he might not shake it. Mm -hmm. You know, he ain't do it to me yet until they do it to me. Now I know next time you won't get my hand. But just know if you try to extend it to me, now I'm looking at you funny. Tell me what happened last time because... I'm gonna talk to you about it. I'm definitely on. I'm one of those people that's. I'm. I'm gonna confront the issue straight on. Mm -hmm. I'm never gonna stray away from it. So that's why I still keep so many good relationships. That's why I can still call a lot of people and get a lot of shows because I'm not. Even if you think I did you wrong, I'm gonna come to you then. Mm -hmm. What did I do? I messed up. Tell me. Let me fix it. How do I work it out? And for those who say I didn't, holler at me. And I'll put you on. You know what I'm saying? I'll straighten you out. You know what I mean? We'll fix it. Mm -hmm. That's all it is, you know? And so going back again to when you first started. So you've always been kind of kooky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, cool. Been a little wild. I, I saw the first time I, we met was at uh, We Got Jokes in Second City. Okay. And I think. I don't know. Have we met prior to Before that? Before that? I don't think so. Okay. Well, um... No, maybe not. Okay. No, I might have seen you at a show up north for the end there, yes, but we yeah. might not have met. Uh, it's a big scene. Yeah. Um, and I remember seeing this explosive energy. Okay. Like, it was big. You used every inch <laughs> of the stage. <laughs> you mean. you would go from l real quiet to yeah. really loud and everything in between. Yeah. It sounds like that's always been in you, but what was the experience to, um, refining that style? Oh, wow. Um, well, while we talk about Second City, um, I think education is very important. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of education in my life. And then I've, in that, I've always had a lot of people in my life. Mm 
So I've always been comfortable to be myself. Um, youngest of 15 kids. Uh, whoa, 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 15? Yeah, I'm the youngest of 15. Okay. So my childhood was always people around. Yeah. I was, I've always had an audience from the day I was born. And then, you know, getting into high school, you know, creating our own frat in high school, being in the band, playing baseball, always being part of these groups, always around people. You know, I've never had a chance to be alone. You know, I've always had to entertain some way, shape, or form. And, you know, going into college is the same way. So it was just constantly being in front of parties and fun and people and constantly people call, calling me to find out who is where and what's going on and you know i eventually become a connection you know to parties and the fun and you know it's just always so just my dad he's fun my mom she's a roaster oh, really? you know yeah my <laughs> my grandfather she he used to roast you know so it was always you could get my family down south together and they all they do all day is roast each other mm. period point blank it's all they do 24 hours a day every day go to sleep doing it so it's just how it's the energy came from my family okay so all this energy is just it you're just born into it god gave it to me yeah. man god god produced this and i'm just a child uh, just blessed with the energy that i was given you know and I'm, i'd imagine and i want to I'm, I'm i'm been working on getting to south side spots more it hard, i mean you see where i live uh, I, uh, <laughs> oh my god <laughs> Go ahead. Let's the get traffic had traffic. Yeah, it was wild. Oh my God. It was so it was so it was so far. Yeah. To get here. I almost just turned around <laughs> <laughs> and went home. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have been mad. I at had you. I had to go get another car yeah. to finish the trip. I think I, I think this is a vacation. I'm staying the night. <laughs> it's just I got to do something up here now. I, I can't just go back home. That'd be three hours of driving for a twenty-minute interview. That's gonna be. Are crazy. you in the, the wild hundreds or something? How far? I, are you? I'm past the wild hundreds. I'm in the wild two hundreds. I'm, I'm I'm in the suburb suburb burb, burb, burbs. Okay. I'm where they okay. put colored uh, garbage cans out. You know, <laughs> yeah, our, our garbage is racist where I'm is. You know. <laughs> well, I'll then thank you for coming up here because that's that's a lot. Um, but I know I want to get to the like. When I first moved out here, I made it a point to um, because I had a car and I and I was mm -hmm. in Pilsen. Okay, that's yeah, a little, it's it was closer. a little easier a little to get easier. to places. Mm -hmm. So I made it a point to go to like bartend to go to. Um, mm -hmm. I, it was just Nisha's spot. I can't remember. Laugh therapy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, uh, the, the fire brigade. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what it's called. Right, right. right. Mm -hmm. I made it a point to go all these spaces because it was something important to me. I think. Right. Yeah, you know, I, I I come from California. I don't know if you knew that. Oh no, I did. Yeah, from Southern California, very very okay. white, conservative suburb. Okay. wasn't wasn't fun. <laughs> uh, not an enjoyable experience. Oh okay. And part of the reason why I moved to to Chicago was to be around black people. Oh wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I never I never would have thought of that. That's crazy. And and, yeah. and I've been like just going to Cali. I could see where you could say is just like no black people around at all you know so. especially where i was at. yeah and i've noticed like you were saying we were talking to the distance north and south mm -hmm. it's it's night and day it is a completely different mm -hmm. styles um mm -hmm. and I, i've been saying this ty had this quote he said that north side wants bars south side wants energy yes and it feels like you probably thrive in the south side because of that because of your energy Probably okay. more than likely that people feed off my energy, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I am a big ball. Uh, I, I normally hold it. That's why I say sometimes you you're like this. That's the same person that was on stage, you know, because, you know, I just go up there and immediately start sweating because mm -hmm. my energy just got built so high and I just burst. Um, but that's just the type of person I am. You mm -hmm. know, I love to have fun, karaoke. We dance, you know. Just you know, being young like that, brother. So my brother was a uh, was a choreographer, mm. one of my older brothers, uh, uh, and uh, he used to make us do Janet Jackson dances, Michael Jackson dances. Yeah. So we never could get away from it. It's always constant doing. Mm. So I guess I was just born to 
give energy, you know. So, is your family? Is he a choreographer? Is your family also in the performances, or are you like the guy who? Uh, I I would say that everybody kind of dabbled. They wanted to. My brother did a little. He danced with Janet Jackson a couple times, so he did his thing. Mm-hmm. But he really um, like just did it and then backed up off of it. Um, so yeah, me and probably I'm probably one of the main ones. What pushes you to keep going? Why? What is it about this that makes you feel like you want to keep doing this? <laughs> Uh, good question. Cause um, I'm gonna say when when God puts something on you, it's hard to run away from. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, I I I quit. I I quit. I I quit comedy for almost ten years. I quit. Every night I would write a joke. Every night, get up in the middle of the night and say that shit's funny. Write it down. Didn't do nothing with it. Ten years later, I I lost my job, changed of careers, out of town. It was an open mic somewhere. I had my book. I was writing jokes at night for no reason. I said, let me try it. And it, I did great. And I couldn't believe it. I thought I was going to be terrible. I just couldn't believe it. And I said, if this what you want me to do, God, then show me, right? Uh, and I, that night I had a dream. And he said, when I say go, don't stop. And I heard go. And then I started getting booked. Started getting booked. Started getting booked. Started getting booked. Started looking at stuff. People started talking to me about shows. and It was like, so I couldn't turn anything down. That was the word I got in my dreams, not to turn anything down. Just keep going. So I'm still here. So that's really what it is. Until God told me to stop, I'm not going to stop. I think that's beautiful, man. Mm-hmm. Good for you. For this, I mean, whoever's listening, if you're not into comedy, <laughs> uh, there's a momentum that you can build. Mm-hmm. And when you stop, that momentum and it f- is so hard to get it back mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think <clears throat> speak a little more and I'll ask you another question mm-hmm. I think people who aren't in this who, who have never really tried to pursue comedy seriously right. they don't understand that it's there it's, it's not like trying to be a dentist where <laughs> There's a, you do take this class, you take this class, learn how to do the drill thing, and now you're a dentist. <laughs> it's, it's, you don't know and what's. Barack Obama was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't be on camera. I just want the voice to say it all. Um, <laughs> but, but people don't real like you're gambling. This is a gamble. Ah, <laughs> this is a full, it, well, I, I'm going to say. In the beginning, it's a gamble. Okay. Um, once you figure the algorithm, mm-hmm. then it's a job. Once you fall in love with it, it becomes a career. So you you have to figure the algorithm and fall in love in order to reach those next levels. Some people don't understand that part of the game because – there's a way to just get paid. There's a way you can you can figure out how to write um, a good a two page, uh, one page uh, paper to investors or little businesses get money. They they will invest in you if you got you can find a club and talk to them. There's papers you can get to go to clubs and you know there's an algorithm to getting a club building it up and making money. There's an algorithm to getting booked whether you're a DJ a promoter or whatever and then you could just do that forever and and not love it you know because you know the, the algorithm. You know you got the stuff in order to get booked but then when you fall in love with it and people can see that love on stage, then that's when the next level start coming, when then you start getting 
uh, managers to do the work for you and then you start really elevating your jokes and your style and the way you look the way you walk in as soon as you walk in the door you're on the clock mm. probably we're getting out the car people might the people in the audience might be watching you from there this is what i learned in la they watch everything everything what you driving what you got on shoes socks hair how you looking what you saying how you saying it? What words you use? It's so monitored, everything. And we just don't even monitor ourselves out here. We just willy-nilly out here dressing how we want, doing what we want, looking ugly as hell on stage. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I gotta say, that's what I love about Chicago, though. Mm -hmm. I, I came out here because it was like, it was about if you're funny. If you're not funny, <laughs> you, if you are, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. If you're not funny, you better be dressed nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that's, that, that's the only way you can leave with dignity. And I'll tell you, I have left with no dignity multiple times. Uh, it is. And, and, and I love it. I lo like you were saying, when you fall in love with it, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I just did, um, do you know Shelton? You know Shelton. Oh, of course. Uh, he has a mic in um, somewhere on the west yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, started yeah. recently. Mm -hmm. I did that recently, or, or yesterday, because it was Monday. And it went well with, with the Kayla, right? The um, yes. he gets to co-hosting it, right? Yes, okay. yes. I think I think that was my first time meeting. Okay, her. she seemed nice. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's I we watched. <laughs> Have you okay in this game of comedy? You see crazy people, of course. Yeah, all the time. We had a woman show up who who uh, she'd never done comedy. We're sitting, we're talking, or whatever, and she's like, and we're like, oh, so what, what made you want to do it? Yada, and she's mm -hmm. like, it's a secret. Uh oh, it's just a secret. I can't tell you. Like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, why did you drive all the way up from Champagne, which is like two? Uh, yeah, Champagne. She she drove for an open from mic. Champagne for this open mic. Oh wow. For her first time doing stand up. And we were oh uh, well, you know, she's trying to get away from anybody that didn't know her. Probably. Well, we thought that was the reason. <laughs> she got on stage and she she grabbed a bunch of women from the crowd, put them on the this like sofa thing, okay, and then started like not stripping, but like giving them all lap dances. And her goal was and none of it was funny. It was very uncomfortable. Like this, I'm making it sound like oh, it was it was really weird. Okay. And I guess her goal was to get it filmed, send it to Dave Chappelle. And Dave is going to be so enamored with uh, how uh, genius what she did was that she'll hire her, her to do something with a weed company. I don't know. Comedy's weird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. People have their delusions. And hold on. Delusions. I think that's a perfect. Like, how, <laughs> <laughs> how do you. How do you know, and this isn't me saying that you're delusional, but <laughs> how do you know you're not delusional? Sometimes I'm like, am I this woman? Am I this woman in my, in, in my head? I'm doing great, but I'm actually crazy. Um, there's a, a little bit of delusional you need to have to be a comic. Mm. You have to put yourself so far out of normal sometimes to create, especially the level of creativity we need, you know. Um, we creating, but we also have to create imperfection, right? So if you do a joke, it has to be perfect or it won't work every time. So now you're creating something you don't know that's going to be perfect. So you have to be somewhat delusional to tell yourself yeah, this this everybody gonna laugh at this. You know, you got you gotta have some kind of form of, you know, a a, a, just a little yeah. crazy to know. And this some of the jokes y'all come up with, y'all yeah. crazy. <laughs> y'all are delusional to think that some of this stuff gonna work, and it works. Yeah, because you take yourself to a whole nother level. So I ain't saying they had to be fully delusional, but I'm just saying it has yeah, to be it just had to be a tinge of crazy in that comic. So hers just peaking. Yeah. It's just peeking and she she just thinks like like the regular internet person right now. Right, right. You think about it, that's how they think. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do something stupid for the gram and I'm gonna make it famous. Send it out and get famous. It's so I don't know, to me is that's insulting to the craft. It's <laughs> it insult, is. like this is it an is. art form. Fully, fully insulting to the craft and to the people who read and study and write yeah. and work on it and really care. And comedy is a weird art in that 
I it feels like the only art form where people think like hey, I, I could do that whatever like you, she wouldn't I don't know if it was a music mic she, and you gave her a piano she didn't know how to play piano she wouldn't get up there and I just bang on the piano right <laughs> I don't know what it I, I do know what it is I think it's it's that we make it look it easy it looks easy but it's insulting but you know you know you gotta start somewhere That's uh, true. maybe That's true. she'll grow a love for it and uh, figure it out and become a a crucial member of the of the comic world, Fingers you know. Fingers crossed. That's yeah, so you know. Positive, yeah. yeah, you know. You got. You know. It, it's. It, you never know where people start. People start right. so many different ways. Right. You know. People be so hurt. It, it's especially now mentally. You get a lot of mentally hurt people, mm. and comedy probably saved her. She probably saw a comic and it might have saved her. She said, "You know, I want to do that." And maybe it was Dave Chappelle. That's fair. Do you feel mentally hurt or do you feel like you're <laughs> outside? Of, you know what I mean? Those faces. I, I used to be I used to be mentally hurt. When I started comedy, yeah. I probably was mentally hurt. Okay. I was I was wild. I, I Lenny Bruce was like one of my comics. Like Oh, you go old school. Yeah, I I like the comedians that Rodney Dangerfield. I like the comedians that to fight whatever was normal mm. and robin williams i i if i if i'd have known these guys was on cocaine i wouldn't like them as much but the <laughs> fact that that was my inspiration it was like i want to jump around stages and just yeah. pee on them and i want people to laugh at me peeing on them I, I you know i want r kelly not like that not like the r kelly kind of pee but lenny bruce literally pulled his penis out and peed on stage and they was cracking up i mean it's just a thing that he's known for like so yeah. my thing is i just love that that the you could just be as free as you want. It's like the freest form and expression of art that's live that you can get other than actual art is comedy. There's free speech, it's art, and again, it has to come perfect or people won't laugh. It's that timing. It's, you have to be perfect. So think of the art like that, like a, a painter can mess up and you might never know. Even the actor can make a mistake, and you may not know. But a comedian, you make one mistake, everybody knows. Yeah. You know, even if you try to fix it, you could be quick enough to fix it. But if yeah, they, they if, still know if you set that punchline <laughs> and it didn't work, you better keep going, boo, boo, boo. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I get you. So it's beautiful. So when you first started, you felt hurt. Now then, you stopped for ten years. Do you think that was connected to the hurt? The stop was uh, because I never had to. I never had a chance to slow down in life, you know. Just jumping from thing. Like I said, my whole life it was always much, and then I was like, we was doing comedy. We was on the road all the time. Uh, my homie Terry had a, you know, comedy can be hard on you mentally. You know, we was hanging with famous people, doing big shows. And broke, you know. I, I I'm, yeah, I'm sorry. Go on. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. How how is that? And this is gonna sound silly, but how is that possible? It, it's possible. It's possible yeah. because, like, we were getting paid. So one of my best friends played for Jacksonville, the Jaguars, and um, that we would do shows out there for the Jaguars. We would do big shows, you know out there with the team, hanging out with millionaires, you know. We would say, hey, D-Ray, hey, hey, you know, we, my homie doing the show come. So we would have other kind, we was, we were really like in good positions with really big shows and hanging out with these football players and basketball players and doing these huge shows. And, you know, we still only opening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We still only opening for them, but we there, and we in the mix. So like you know, it's just like to to me, I was born broke. I 15 brothers, so we ain't had nothing. I, my hand me downs was my sister's hand me downs from her for my older brother giving it to her, and she went and giving it to me. Mm. That's how I handed me. I was really a mustard poor. stain. Yeah, real. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't have mustard. You hater. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, but I would have loved to. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, and Terry was, it was three of them. Mm. He's born with a silver spoon, both parents working, different situation than me. So he's always saw money. So for him, he's seeing money but didn't have it. For me, I'm just seeing all new stuff. I'm excited to be in the room. He's like, we need money for this right, hotel. Right. I'm like, I'll sleep in the car. You know what I mean? So it, it was it, it, he. It was harder on him mm. because of you know he knew better. Mm. He knew we deserved better and he wanted better, but we couldn't get it at the time. You know. Yeah, and crazy. you said you uh, you went on the road with Leon for a little bit. Yeah, when Leon run the Millers. Um, the Miller Genuine Draft, they used to do comedy competitions back in the day. Okay. Uh, MGD Comedy Search. And the winner used to go on the road and do things. So we did the finals. So it was at um, uh, Navy Pier. So the finals at Navy Pier, they gave us jackets. And it was beautiful. And um, Leon, he, he um, took us a couple times on the road with him, Indianapolis, and a few places just because we made it to the finals. And, you know, we was two funny funny cats, you know. Yeah. To see, like, like we was a wilder version of Arsenal and Mitchell. Like, we didn't do voices, but you know, like all the crazy stunts, jumping around. I used to jump and launch myself. He would catch me and pirouette me in the air. Like, real, like, acrobatic, weird, crazy stuff. Yeah. And uh, we used to go crazy, man. We used to get standing ovations a lot. Um, it was it was just fun, you know. So that was a good time. Do Real you, good time. Do you feel like you can build up to something, or are you building up to something, or are you there past it? Like what? You know what I'm saying? Like you know, I, it's a lot of things brewing right now. Oh, okay. And this is some uh, evil looking face you just made. Is it the other face? <laughs> yes, that's the other face. That's that's the business side of me that okay. loves the. Because I know uh, the work that I'm putting in on the business end to not only bring some of that back. The ir ironic, I should have sent you that clip of uh, D-Ray introducing us. Mm. His introduction was he used to be part of a two-man act. They broke up, and now they, they both here. One of them's here to see if he doing bad. That was the intro. So that's how you know, you know. Mm. Yeah, that, that's what I had to go up to yeah. at the Hollywood Improv. So uh, I come in fighting. I don't have to fight the audience, but they 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 like okay, let's see if he <laughs> if he do bad type. So, uh, but that's D Ray for you. He he honest. He's the most honest person. What are you gonna do? Go up there and say something that ain't honest? That was the truth. Yeah. Because in his mind, we even still to this day, this is almost twenty years later. Yeah. Let's be honest. Too shady. Broke up in 2007. Too Shady went from 2000 to 2007. We broke up. His father died. We built a comedy club called The Zone. 2008, 2009, 2010. It was done 2011. That's That was the extent. Ten years, that's what we did. And in that Still, my intro is, I ain't did that since 2011. It's 2023. Yeah. And my intro is, well, I was part of a duo. So that's how big that duo was. And honestly, we are bringing that back. We That's the plan to move on to, the, to doing shows. We actually did a show at a casino um, in California last year. It was great. So we, we got good reviews on it. And we're trying to open up the casino shows. Okay. We're trying to make some real money this time, you know. No okay. more playing around. I like that. So <laughs> it sounds like you have a plan. It sounds like divulging all of the plan is not what you need to do right now. No, of course not. And I look forward to seeing whatever it is. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, so you're going to be part of it. Don't worry. You're going to get in. Well, thank you. Uh, you ready for your last question? Go ahead. Okay. So we're going to pretend that the, the camera's you five years from now. Okay. You can say anything you want to yourself, the future self, five years from now. What do you want to say? Five years from now. Yep. So my future self. Uh huh. Future self. I hope, I hope that you hustled your ass off and that we in that nice big villa 
We doing these big shows, and I hope you still look good. Did you fix your hairline? Get the follicle group thing. Boop, 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 boop. Hair up and do that. We need to look a little younger. I know this hairline is falling apart. If it's still gone, I'm going to be mad at your ass. Okay, also, you know, I got this chip tooth. If that ain't fixed, that means you ain't making no money. Get on your shit, bro. What's happening? Other than that, like, check on, look, the kids is beautiful. I hope they all thriving. Right now, Michaela should be graduating. She should be beautiful. And get her a nice dress, sucker. Don't be cheap with it. Get her a nice dress and have a good time. God bless you. God bless your family. God bless your mama. Whatever pain you felt, because right now, life is great. Whatever pain I have to deal with in the next five years, I hope God bless me. And I hope I can deal with it better and help make people laugh through it, make you laugh through it. Don't lose your energy and your enthusiasm. You're a great person, and God is good to you. Amen. Let's take this picture.